All right, today's video is gonna get me in a lot of trouble. Today's topic, why owning the home you live in is the worst investment you can make. Go easy on me. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris. I'm the founder of Morris Invest, uh, which is a turnkey real estate company, and I've been a longtime investor. And one thing that I had heard over the years from a lot of high-level real estate investors. I'm talking about investors who own 500 properties, 700 properties. One thing they've told me over the years is the worst investment you can make is the home that you live in. And I said, come on, no. Even Robert Kiyosaki talks about this in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Why? Why is it so bad? Now, please leave your comments below this video and we can have a friendly discussion about this. But the argument goes like this, and I tend to agree with it, in part. The argument goes like this. You have $100,000 or $200,000 that you have saved up for a down payment on buying a $500,000 or $600,000 home, okay? Or you even have, you know, seventy dollars to $100,000 that you've saved up as a down payment uh, on to buy a house. Well, first of all, the argument is, why wouldn't you just take that money and buy rental real estate that produces monthly cash flow more or above what you're going to now be paying in a mortgage payment for the house you're living in? It's a non-performing asset. So you're living in this house and sure, you might be building up equity. But at the end of the day, you're paying taxes, you're having to maintain the property, and you are the one paying the mortgage. Now, there are, of course, caveats to this, right? If you live in a duplex, for instance, also known as house hacking, so you live in one side of the duplex and a tenant lives in the other side of the duplex, you're building up equity and the tenant is probably paying uh, rent, which will cover probably your entire mortgage. That's a different scenario, right? Because you're now you're renting portion of your primary residence. But the argument is solid. Imagine taking $100,000 that you have saved up for uh, a down payment and buying two rental properties. Um, those are the houses that I buy and that my company does. So you buy two rental properties and now you're cash flowing 15, 17, 1800 a month in positive net cash flow from two rental properties that you bought. The argument from these high level investors again is that they rent the home they live in. And chances are you can be in the exact same neighborhood or, or even better than the home that you were, were, were planning on buying. Uh, one of my friends who's an investor decided he wants to live right on the beach. He's got an incredible house on the beach. He rents it. He's lived there for years and he owns 270 rental properties, but he does not own the home that he lives in. Uh, you know, you have to run to Home Depot every Saturday to fix things up. Uh, you have to deal with taxes. You have to, uh, uh, all kinds of problems you have to deal with when you are a homeowner. As you know, um, as things break, you have to fix them. The landlord has to fix them if you're renting your primary residence. Anyway, it is food for thought. Please don't yell at me. I happen to own the home I live in, but I really hesitated this last time when we were moving because I thought to myself, if we could take that down payment, we could literally buy eight rental properties with that down payment. We didn't in the end, but I still kind of kick myself for it a lot, to be honest with you. So we live in New Jersey and uh, houses here are ridiculously expensive. If, uh, you know, if, I could rent, if, if I could rent the house I live in in the neighborhood we want to be in, I would be doing it probably if I could go back in time. But I don't have a time machine. There you go. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, again, this is don't shoot the messenger. This comes from a number of people, including Robert Kiyosaki, who talks about those performing assets in the home you live in. Not, not being a performing asset. I'm Clayton Morris. Please subscribe to the channel. I really love when you subscribe and share these videos with your friends. We also have tons of great videos and playlists that you can check out in the description below and to make you a better real estate investor. So go out there and take action and become a real estate investor. Get off the couch. Stop overanalyzing. Take action. We'll see you back here in the next video, everyone.